Hi everybody, so today we're gonna to be talking about the larynx and I'm gonna specifically get into the function of the epiglottis on this video. I'll be making another video in which we actually talk about the vocal cords. So let's go ahead and get started. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw the larynx and I'm gonna do an anterior view and I'm gonna do a posterior view and then we're gonna do a lateral view to look at how the epiglottis works. So um, if we start, what I'm gonna do down here is at the bottom of the larynx, we actually have a cricoid cartilage. Now, your larynx is made up of cartilages, okay? So there's my cricoid lar larynx, I mean my cricoid cartilage. And then what's going to happen is I'm going to have some ligaments, and it's going to connect to um, the thyroid cartilage. So if we were to take a look, I'm going to draw my thyroid cartilage like this, and then come up and around like this. Okay, and it looks something like that, okay? And let me just even these out a little bit more. Okay, and then from here, you are going to have up in here, this isn't, this isn't a thyroid, but this is actually called the hyoid bone, which we'll look at in just a minute. Then we got the hyoid bone. So this is the body of the hyoid bone. I'm just gonna put hyoid. The hyoid bone is the only bone in the body that does not attach to another bone. So I got one right here. And let's take a look at it real quick. And if, if you notice, I kind of drew that up high, but if you notice, if we look at the hyoid bone right here, what you will notice is that there are some parts that stick up right here. And those are called the lesser horns, these parts sticking up right here. This is the body that's right here. So to give you an idea, this is, this is where the body is. And then you can see I have these portions going up here to go out of the video a little bit. That's gonna be right here. So that's going to be the um, greater horns that are these portions right here. So I have my lesser horns in the front that stick up and then I have the greater horns. Now to give you an idea of where this is at, and by the way, the hyoid bone is the only bone in the body that is not connected to another bone. It's that your tongue actually is going to connect to it. But to give you an idea, we have right here, you have uh, styloid processes that are located on the skull that are right here. And what these are going to do is they're actually gonna have ligaments that come down and attach to the hyoid bone as it sits in basically at the top of your throat. It's gonna be somewhere right up in here, okay? And so the, again, the ligaments that attach are actually called the stylohyoid Ligament. So let's take a look at this now. And I'm going to have another ligament that's going to go from here. This is called my thyroid cartilage. Don't confuse the thyroid cartilage with the thyroid. The thyroid is actually a gland, and this is just cartilage. But this is your Adam's apple. Okay, in the anterior view, this is the part that actually sticks out. Now, going from the thyroid cartilage, up to the hyoid, like we said, we have a ligament. Okay, and this ligament is gonna be called the thyrohyoid ligament. Thyrohyoid ligament. And just to, once again, the hyoid bone is the only bone in the body that does not attach to another bone, and it's gonna help you swallow. So let's move this over just a little bit. There is our anterior view, okay? This is our anterior view here. For the posterior view now, I'm gonna join, I'm gonna draw my cricoid cartilage and it's gonna come up and go something like this. You can see a lot more of it on the back than you can on the front. So this is my cricoid cartilage, okay? Let me go back over here really quick. And you do have ligaments that are going to attach here, okay? So there's my cricoid cartilage. Then coming off my cricoid cartilage, I actually have another cartilage, which is kind of sharp. And this is gonna call, be called my athenoid cartilage. So this is gonna be my arthenoid cartilage right here. So let me see, can you still see over here? 
A-R-Y-T-H-E-N-O-I-D, cartilage. And then on top of this, I am going to have another type of cartilage, which is going to be called my corniculate cartilage. So you're going to have ligaments that attach to all these. All right, so this is going to be my corniculate cartilage. Okay, and that's going to be that right there. And then you're going to also have um, something called the cuneiform cartilage. I'm not going to draw it over here because I have the draw on there, but you do have this on both sides. So let's just color this in right here, and this would be my cuneiform cartilage. Okay, and like I said, I mean, these are just going to be attached and they're going to help with. Um, movement and things such as that. The main thing I'm concerned about here is coming up like this. Let me get coming up off of here. We're going to have basically another cartilage that's going to come up and it's going to be like a spoon. And this is the one I'm mainly concerned with in this video. This is going to be called my epiglottis. Okay. And the epiglottis as you can see, it's kind of big and sticks up. You can actually see it from here too. I could draw it coming up in here, but this is going to be my epiglottis. That's right here, this whole thing here. Okay, so this is a posterior view of the larynx here. So again, we have the epiglottis. We're gonna have my carniculate cartilage, which is sitting on top of my uh, arythmoid. Ar ar cartilage, got my tongue twisted there, and then that's on top of my uh, cricoid cartilage. So let's go ahead now and take a look at how this works. So this is just the anatomy here, all right? So let's erase this. And what I'm going to do is I am going to draw a lateral view now. Okay, so it's as if you're looking at my neck from the side. So we're looking this way, okay? So when I do that, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my trachea. So this will be my trachea right here. Now the trachea is also the windpipe. So there's my trachea, the windpipe. And basically what's going to happen is air is going to come down through the trachea. I'm going to move this over just a little bit. Air is going to come down through the trachea and go to the lungs. Okay, in my trachea, I have cartilage, which will help keep this open at all times. We don't want our, we don't want our windpipe closing, right? So we have this cartilage in here to keep it open. And we'll go more into the trachea in, an, in another video. Okay, now, what I'm going to do, and this is not going to be an exact drawing, but it's going to give you an idea. Remember, we're looking at this from the side and someone facing this way. This is going to be my thyroid cartilage. Remember we said this is the Adam's apple? So you can see how that's going to be sticking out right here, right? And then behind that, I am just going to draw um, my epiglottis. Now, I know I have it looking like this. It actually would be curved kind of around this way, okay? So this is going to be the epiglottis. Now, air enters into the respiratory system or into the trachea, it basically goes to an opening in the larynx that's going to be called the glottis. So this is where air enters the respiratory system. I'm going to just put the trachea. I don't have it drawn on here because I'm going to do it in another video, the vocal cords, but the vocal cords would be right up in here and then they would actually cover the, the glottis also. Behind this now, we have a muscular tube. I'm also going to draw this as if it's open, but for the most part, this is closed most of the time. So I'm going to go like this 
and we're going to call this the esophagus. Now, for those of you who know some anatomy, you might be thinking, well, wait a minute, the esophagus is there. Shouldn't these two, shouldn't these, this carotid have an opening there? No, the back would be here. As food actually goes down the esophagus, it's going to open and actually push into this trachea just a little bit. And I will cover that in the video on the trachea. This is what happens when you swallow. First, before we even do that, this is my esophagus. Okay? And the esophagus is going to bring food, or what we call a bolus, to the stomach. Okay? Now, when you swallow, you can actually feel this if you hold on to your um, larynx and, and swallow. When you swallow, the larynx is going to go up. It's going to go up. So if you swallow, hold your, hold your um, Adam's apple and swallow. Don't squeeze tight, but swallow. And you can actually feel it just go up a little bit. When it goes up, what's going to happen is the epiglottis is actually going to come down and it's going to close off this area in here. It's going to close off the glottis so food does not go down into the glottis. You might have eaten food before and heard uh, it went down the wrong pipe. Well, the wrong pipe is the trachea. That means the, the epiglottis didn't close properly and close off the glottis, right? So that's the purpose of the epiglottis is to cover up the glottis when you swallow. Now what will happen is our food, or like I called it a bolus, because you chewed it, is now gonna go down the esophagus and go into your stomach. So that's the function of the epiglottis, and that's just the first part of the larynx. I will be going into the voice, uh, the vocal cords on another video, but thank you so much for watching.